win at home. Now, they lose to Damian Lillard, but the I think the bigger, more interesting part is not just that they lost or how they lost, where uh, Kevin Durant misses a couple of what could have been game ceiling or game-winning shots. Steph Curry with the ball in his hands up to turns it over, and Damian Lillard hits uh, a huge three in his hometown to win the thing for Portland. It, it's not just that they lost to the Portland Trailblazers. It's not just that Clay Thompson's struggles continue or that Draymond Green continues to be unguar unguarded. It's that we operate under this, I think, dated narrative in the NBA, right? A, a dated narrative. Like, we are so slow to react to things, but we're reacting to things because of last year or the year before that. The idea that the Warriors will be fine in the playoffs. But let's look at it in reality. In reality, last year in the playoffs, they beat the Houston Rockets in five games, and the Rockets were missing Chris Paul. And the Rockets missed, what was it, 27 consecutive threes? Something we had never seen before. Like, all of these things had to go wrong for the Rockets in order for it to go right for the Warriors. And, and you can point out that Andre Godala was injured much of that series, and that's a, that's a huge piece for how the Warriors like to play, and that would be fair. Though I'm not equating the value of Iguodala to Chris Paul, I do think that having Iguodala dramatically changes the Warriors. The bigger point is, as close as the Rockets were last year, and I understand that it looked on paper and maybe in reality to start the year like the Rockets have gotten worse, and maybe they have. The rest of the West seems to have gotten better. The Lakers are pronouncedly better than they were last year. I would make the case to the Thunder, when fully healthy, even without Andre Robertson, are better than they were last year. Paul George, much more comfortable, and he's frankly been their best player. You look around the Western Conference, and it feels like four legit competitors, and we're not even pointing out Portland, who, of course, overachieved last year, and that's why they got dusted out of the playoffs. If Portland is your fourth to sixth best team, you got a pretty good, you got a pretty good uh, side of the bracket there, right? Like the West is good, but more importantly, we're dealing with dated data. That data is not accurate. Draymond Green is not the player that he was. He's not an all-star. He's not an all-pro. He's not playing like a Hall of Fame player. Is it injuries? Probably some of it. Is it a lack of confidence because of those injuries? Probably some of it. And remember, Draymond Green is going to have to change positions when DeMarcus Cousins becomes healthy or healthy enough to play. When the Warriors have won any of these three titles, their death lineup has had Draymond Green at the center position. And I don't know if they can or will still do that considering you have DeMarcus Cousins. It'll change the way they play defensively and then offensively, that'll dramatically change their spacing and how you use Draymond Green. Right now, he's still playing as their de facto center, and he's not playing well in spite of the fact that he's wide open offensively. Combine that with the fact that he's in a contract year, wants a max contract, and at some point he tries to prove his value, and Draymond Green is a mess. A mess. Then you got Clay Thompson, who has hidden the fact that he's having an awful year with a couple of outlier performances like old Clay has, has had. Clay Thompson's shooting the second worst from field goal range, worst three point percentage of his career. He's even struggling for Clay Thompson, one of the great shooters in the history of the game at the free throw line. And he too is in a walk year. And then you got Kevin Durant. He's had no missteps in terms of things he said off the basketball floor, has he? <laughs> it always feels like Steph Curry's a turned ankle away from missing a month. And their bench is a disaster. Sean Livingston lo finally looks old. Andre Godala has looked old, has been oft injured. And then news today that Pat McCall, who'd been holding out as a restricted free agent, signed for $800,000 more with the Cleveland Cavaliers. And of course, the Warriors can match that, but McCall hasn't played all year. And if they match it, it costs them $9 million more in luxury tax. They have a bad bench, can add Pat McCall, who's played for them at, at before midseason, and yet we don't know what kind of shape he's in. 
and we know how that hurts them in terms of the luxury tax. You look at the what they needed last year in order to win 27 consecutive missed threes. Chris Paul getting hurt, which does feel like it's going to happen in the future and has happened recently for the Houston Rockets. But still, Chris Paul ain't hurt. They make one, of the, one or two of those threes, and we might have a different NBA champion today. And oh, yeah, by the way, everybody's acting like that 73-win team of a couple years ago was what was added to Kevin Durant. Well, they, they changed. They lost Bogut. They changed the bench. They changed the rotation. And the league has caught up to what they do. And the league has mimicked and mirrored many of the things that they do. We operate with dated data. This isn't last year. This isn't the year before. This isn't what gamblers do when they go like, hey, you know, Andrew Luck, 10 times in a row, he's beaten the Tennessee Titans. No, one time this year, he's beaten the Tennessee Titans. The construct of the team, the construct of the league, the way in which it's officiated changes year to year. And this Warriors team losing two consecutive home games, that never happened. That never happened. Losing at home is one thing. Losing back-to-back -back home games against playoff teams, they usually play to their level of competition. This idea that the Warriors can be team clapper. You remember the clapper? Clap on, clap off, the clapper. That they can get to the playoffs and go like, all right, we're going to play. The league is closer than you would think. Most people don't pay a ton of attention to regular season NBA outside of Christmas Day. And Steph Curry has played poorly before on Christmas Day. He shot poorly on Christmas Day again. But the turnover that Steph had, the, the over-dependence on Kevin Durant to bail them out, the lack of, of bench depth of any kind, Draymond Green being a almost non-factor outside of being a passer on offense, and Klay Thompson suddenly struggling to make shots that he has always made in the NBA. Before you put in pencil, or definitely before you put in pen, that the Warriors are going to win the NBA championship, and then we'll figure out what happens with KD, with Klay, and with, with Draymond Green. This, this thing is closer. The, the league catches up. The league will figure you out. There are more challenges by day. Look at, look at any business leader. Any business leader. Like the first in, first in always crushes it, right? But you got to continue to evolve. You got to continue to change. Look at those Bulls teams with two different runs. Yes, Jordan remained the same. And Pippen remained the same. Outside of that, everything else changed. Everything else changed. First, it was Horace Grant and John Paxson and medical Bill Cartwright. Right? And by the end, they had Steve Kerr. They had Will Perdue. They had Dennis Rodman. They had Luke Longley. They cycled through a bunch of different guys who, one, were hungry, but two, because they were different stages in their career, they provided different things. This Warriors team looks a little bit tired, a little bit annoyed with each other, overly dependent on Kevin Durant to bail them out because he is and has been that good of an offensive player. And those things they were able to get away with a couple years ago, throwing the ball into the stands, behind the back passes, turning it over against the double team. Clay Thompson will bail us out with five threes when the game is tight, and we'll just boat race people. Hey, guess what? Now everybody's shooting threes. Everybody's playing small. Everybody knows what you do, how you do it, and how to take it away. It's closer than you think. All right, some super interesting games upcoming this weekend, week 17 in the National Football League. I'm Doug Gottlieb filling in for Colin. Vikings-Bears, to me, most interesting, right? Because they have Kirk Cousins, who many of you, if not a super high percentage of you, would say, wow, massively overpaid. How much he's paid is the number one determinant in how you view him. And oh, yeah, by the way, He's rightfully, if not undercompensated. I'll prove it to you next. I'm Doug Gottlieb. This is The Hurt.